Hey, what's up everyone? So today we're going to be talking about reviewing an Othello game using software. So I think all of the episodes that I covered uh, prior to this one, it's all about general guidelines on how to play good Othello. And as you improve your game, uh, you know, all of these guidelines you would realize actually stems from observations or experience from top players or players who have played a lot of games and, you know, come up with all of these uh, principles and observations on how to play, you know, good moves, like, you know, playing quiet moves, trying to minimize impact on the board, trying to formulate strategies, how to play a wedge, you know, sacrifice corners, playing stoner traps. So all of these are actually fairly intuitive in nature. And, you know, ultimately, you, you realize that all of these guidelines can help you uh, master your game up to a certain extent, maybe 80% of the game, if you are able to master all of these uh, guidelines. And, you know, yet um, there is also that element about perfect play in Othello because uh, of... The, existing, the existence of uh, Othello reviewing software. So, in fact, the software can kind of help you calculate and predict, you know, what's the best move possible in any uh, given situation. So there are so many uh, Othello softwares available today. One of the uh, software that is perhaps uh, the oldest one, at least that was the one that I started using when I first studied the game about maybe 10 years ago, uh, it is called W, the letter W, and then followed by Zebra, W Zebra. So this is typically, you know, downloadable online. I believe it's still free and available. So that is something that is uh, a software that can be installed on your Windows uh, operating software or laptop, you know, OS laptops. And um, I think that has always been the case uh, of, you know, using it as a review. So on a mobile version that we're going to be using today, it's, uh, I think it used to be called Droid Zebra, and now it has been rebranded to Reversatile over here. So today we're going to be uh, using Reversatile as a demo software just to let you know on how to review. And of course, if some of you have already watched my opening videos, you would have realized that I've been pretty much using this platform. And I think besides uh, W Zebra, uh, maybe one uh, other software to highlight is Ntest. I think a lot of people install and use Ntest. Even the top Japanese players also like to use uh, Ntest or Nboard. I think this is also available free online. If you go and Google it and you just search for it, you'll be able to install it. And for people who use like MacBooks or, you know, the Mac OS software, perhaps you might want to explore this software called Casio, C-A-S-S-I-O. So that is also a reviewing software available. But since now nowadays, all of us are pretty much on the move on our mobile phones more than perhaps on our laptops, uh, you might also want to consider a brand new software that is uh, created uh, by an Italian programmer, I believe. And uh, the name is Sao, S-A-I-O. So it's a fantastic software, and I believe the search depth and the engine strength is uh, arguably stronger than Reversatile and most of the other softwares available. Uh, I think many players have been using it, and it's a very interesting uh, software that allows you to also uh, do many other functions like uh, download or uh, of World or Tele Championship games to review, replay your game uh, in a regression model of... Uh, reviewing that every move of the way, identifying each of your mistakes for each of the, your games. And then, of course, um, one of the most interesting features is to actually use past games to emulate one of the players. So, interestingly, uh, on the software, I'm even able to uh, emulate myself based on my own historical world or Tello championship games and I, I basically played against myself once. I managed to win 33 to 31 thankfully. So so that is that. Um, that's the types of software that, that is available today. So um, so when you use software to, to kind of review your game, let me just jump right into the practice mode over here. We'll just click on these uh, settings and then We'll set it to practice mode, right? And then we'll go back to the screen. Oh. Let's go back to that screen over here. 
Okay, so we're back into the practice mode where there are already uh, some ratings over here. So essentially, as a black, uh, regardless of where you play, rotate all of the moves are rotationally symmetrical. So you know it's giving you a plus zero rating, meaning in the event of perfect play, it probably results in a draw for both sides. So <clears throat> how how should you use software to review your game? When I first started learning the game, I always reviewed each and every one of the games that I lost. Um, because uh, essentially, if I lost the game, I figure that I must have made at least one or two mistakes or even more uh, you know, in each of these games. And I, there's probably a point to review it. So if you review each and every one of your loss, you're able to kind of pick up your mistakes. But of course, you also kind of uh, become oblivious to your blind spots to the games that you won. So in you know games that are having various openings, it might be worth also relooking even uh, games that you felt like you won, but you probably should not have won uh, because of your opponent's mistake. So the third uh, point is uh, reviewing in depth. So... Mr. Takanashi Yusuke, who is uh, a five-time world champion uh, from Japan and probably one of the most uh, promising players to you know, potentially exceed uh, Mr. Hideshi Taminori's seventh uh, record, seven record world titles, uh, he, he once said that um, the reason of his strength is because he reviews each of his game really in depth, regardless of whether is it a loss or a win. He just goes in to review and... Uh, try and internalize each and every one of those uh, aspects in the game. So that is why he's so strong. So I think that is probably an approach that all of us should adopt when it comes to playing Othello and using software to review your games. So let's say if uh, we play if we play the game and we wanted to review it, we would then just play it out over here, potentially. In Sayo, if you were to play a game, uh, you can probably mark it as regression analysis and you can run through uh, and you can step through each move. So let's just say, for example, if uh, a game was played uh, in a shaman opening and, you know, if I, I made a mistake somewhere, I would probably know where exactly I made a mistake, where I started to lose uh, advantage, perhaps. So let's just say um, this is a game sequence. So typically... In an opening sequence, uh, it's not so critical if your disadvantage was a plan one, if you meant to make a certain opening variation. But you know, towards the end, if you're looking to retain that, uh, if you're looking to win the game, here you should at least try to you know minimize uh, mistakes and minimize giving more advantage to your opponent. So typically, you know, if you have the sequence of the game in be it in your mobile software or in your mind if you memorize you know what happened in the game you're able to kind of pinpoint where exactly your mistake is with the help of software they can tell you that okay perhaps over here you actually played g2 or you played b2 x squares are bad right if you played g7 or g8 here you know x squares and c squares are both bad so what exactly is a good move perhaps playing a quiet move that flips through this in the center without being exposed. This is fairly better, F2. And then, of course, F1 might be, you know, feeding E1 and capturing the edge, something like that. Or C1 would be approaching the edge, but kind of uh, potentially feeding your opponent to B1 and unbalance edge, if possible. So <clears throat> if you look through um, these rating, you would roughly kind of also... Um, reverse engineer certain guidelines that we've covered in the first few episodes. So over here, <coughs> for example, E1 is way too loud because it flips one, two, three, four, five, five discs in two different directions and it pretty much takes away a lot of your mobility. You give so many moves to your opponent. So this is something that, you know, might be unfavorable. And of course, the software kind of validates that observation. So... Yeah, basically that's the, the basics of reviewing games with software. As long as you replay the sequences, you're able to, to kind of find out where you went wrong and where you probably could have done better and, you know, you could have played differently. So another um, interesting thing about the software is to kind of uh, prepare yourself in terms of preparing openings. So if, let's say you, if you're playing the Shaman opening, um, let's just say F6 is something that is uh, the best move as recommended by the software. 
But the best response for your opponent, if you are planning an opening against your opponent, is at f5, which is fairly intuitive in terms of regrouping your disc. Or alternatively, c4 is just flipping one disc over here to the left. So these two moves are these two best moves are fairly intuitive, which is something that you could use the software to your advantage by kind of predicting where your opponent will play uh, using software and logic as a combination. So instead of playing this uh, move, one of the moves that I, I like to play is to play e7 because e7 usually results in white playing either f5 or c4 which is fairly intuitive because you're flipping only one or two discs in only one direction. And yet the best move that is recommended over here is d3 which usually you in the opening phase you probably don't want to flip two discs in two different directions and you know kind of create an entire boundary to the top that results in so many options for black uh, in the further up uh, in the second row and also the C column and the G column. So essentially, if you use the software and you prepare certain openings or explore certain openings, that can also help in terms of combining uh, your logic uh, in terms of all the guidelines that you've learned so far and you know the typical kind of playing styles that many players have. So that is essentially um, you know the tips that I wanted to cover uh, for today in terms of reviewing a game with software. So um, going forward, if you play a game on Othello Quest or Play OK or any website uh, for Othello, go ahead and you know kind of take a pause once you've completed the game, run it through uh, the Othello software, maybe reverse it out if you're on Android, if you're on Apple. Go ahead and download Sayo. It's a paid app, uh, which costs maybe twenty to twenty-five dollars, but it's really worth uh, the money, I would say. So go ahead and and download it, and you know, go ahead and review, and you would see, you know, your improvement come. So I think compared to a more intuitive way of learning Othello, reviewing the game with software makes it a very uh, hard-coded approach. So I think one of the pitfalls about reviewing uh, Othello games with software is that you tend to want to over uh, memorize certain openings or memorize certain games. So it's better to review the software together with intuition and logic and try to internalize all of the observations that you see so that you can become a better player. So I hope uh, today's episode will help you in your game uh, using Othello software. And thank you very much for, for joining me and I'll see you at the next episode. Goodbye.